Hello, it's The Ghost. Welcome to A Stranger World Than Fiction, where we are taking a look at what's all going on out there and what others are claiming to be true. And as truth finders, we are trying to find answers. Today, we're going to get into a creepy tale. It's the story of George Lukens. He was a tailor infamous for his alleged demonic possession and the subsequent exorcism that occurred way back in 1788 when he was only 44. This case caused great controversy in England. And as for us, we're here to dive into what they have to say and see what we think of it all. Did this really happen? Check it out and find out. All right, where well, this is another share from Ancient Origins, and it came to us in August of 2021, so just not that far back. It's titled 18 Years Possessed The Seven Devils of George Lukens. And you may have heard of George before, but let's hear what this take is, because usually these guys tie it up pretty nicely, and let's see what we think, okay? So the concept of the existence of paranormal activity is an intriguing thought for many people, right? We know this. With so many unnatural incidents being reported, which are directly associated with demonic possession, it's important to try at least to uncover the truth. We owe the history that, don't we? History in and of itself is something that shouldn't be ignored. And the more we understand about that, the more we're going to understand about what's happening to us right now. So is the theory. All right, well, one such case of demonic possession marked in the annals of history as a particularly confusing episode is the demonic possession of George Lukens. As a matter of fact, the case of George Lukens was well known at the time, garnering infamous popularity in England back in 1778. Let's dive deeper into the mystery case of George Lukens to find out what exactly transpired in one of the strangest cases of demonic possession on record. Where it all began, where it all started. Reverend Joseph Easterbrook was in England when he came across one of the most controversial cases in his clerical career, in his entire career. On May 31st, 1778, a member of his parish came to him with quite an unnatural request. Sarah Babber, his parishioner, had recently paid a visit to the nearby town of Yanton in Somerset and witnessed a man inflicted with an unexplained condition. She stated that the man was a tailor, and he was in his 40s, and he went by the name George Lukens. According to her account, Lukens experienced fits that were daily happenings, characterized by certain events. One of the foremost features of his fits was that he sang and screamed loudly in different sounds. Some of the sounds he made during the state of trace did not resemble any type of modulation of the human voice. Apparently, George Lukens also hurled expletives and the vilest of abuses in an aggressive manner. Most important of all, though, Lukens also said that doctors couldn't help him when he was in this sort of state of trance. Sarah Babber had been living in Yatton many years before the incident and had formed a different impression of George Lukens. She affirmed that Lukens was a religious man who went to church regularly and was perceived as a good man in society. However, all this goodness in George Lukens was apparently put to the test when his fits started almost 18 years ago. Quite a long time under demonic possession, wouldn't it be? The mere thought of demonic possession can send shivers down the spine. And here was a man apparently suffering from evil spirits inside his body for almost two decades. So what was going on? All right, well, they're referring to the slap of doom. There are many conflicting accounts regarding the reasons for the demonic possession of George Lukens. His family had taken him to several doctors only to meet with disappointment when they could not figure out the reason behind his erratic behavior, despite their best efforts. It was even recommended that Lukens be observed over an 18-month-long stay at St. George's Hospital, London. However, the fits didn't go away. The gossip in his local community soon branded him as cursed, bewitched even, or possessed by a demon. Just like everyone else, George Lukens himself was completely dumbfounded about the reasons for these fits. 
According to the testimony of Lukens, the possession started when he was performing a part of a mummer's play one Christmas. At that time, a young George Lukens was making his way through the streets when he experienced someone slapping him, and they slapped him so hard that he fell unconscious down to the road. The slap, as many also referred to as the divine slap, has been attributed to him consuming alcohol at the time, according to people who knew him. And this is used a lot, so we have to be careful. We can't be swayed by this too much because it's very easy to say about a lot of things. Well, they were drunk at the time, right? So if we take that out of it, we can see what we think. But so they said, right? Well, shortly after the incident of this slap, Lucan started showing abnormal behavior, such as seizures with strange barking sounds. The most distinctive highlight of Lucan's behavior, however, was the unexplainable and vigorous twitching of his right hand. It wasn't long before George Lucan started to share the belief of the local community that he was actually cursed. George Lucan himself went on to claim that as many as seven demons had possessed him. That's a lot. Lukens also claimed that seven clergymen would be required for removing the seven demons. Based on all these events, Sarah Baber approached Reverend Easterbrook, who immediately made arrangements for bringing George to Bristol. So then we move on to the exorcism of George Lukens. So he's gone on with this for a long time. And finally, he's being taken seriously enough that maybe something can be done. Reverend Easterbrook examined George Lukens directly on his arrival at Bristol. Easterbrook, along with his colleagues who had gathered to examine Lukens, were surprised at the things they saw, the sounds and expressions exhibited by Lukens, along with the unexplainable convulsions and the aggression. It all led Reverend Easterbrook and some of his colleagues to believe that it was a real and true case of demonic possession. However, There were other colleagues of Reverend Easterbrook that were more skeptical about George being possessed by some demonic entity. Reverend Easterbrook then sought the assistance of Methodist ministers in the area to pray for Lukens and help him perform an exorcism, such as Reverend John Valton and Reverend John Wesley. Reverend Easterbrook also published an account of this exorcism in the Bristol Gazette, a local newspaper. So he is attempting to show that this is a real thing and that he has something real to say about it. And he's also trying to silence any rumors that are going on at the time about the event. The accounts that he put out state that George Lukens claimed he was the devil and that he exhibited violent tantrums while singing an inverted version of Te Deum. And so Methodist exorcisms resemble Catholic exorcisms in many ways. They did. The rituals included commands and adjurations for the demon to leave. Prayers and hymns had to accompany the commands. And the process would then conclude with the casting out of the demons by using a spoken phrase in the name of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit, for example. So how was George Lukens after they did all of this? Well, after the clergyman commanded the demon to leave George's body and return to hell, he appeared to return to normalcy. That's George, of course. The accounts of Reverend Easterbrook state that he exclaimed praise for the Lord Jesus and then recited the Lord's Prayer and further expressed his gratitude to the clergyman for their efforts. So all seems to be going well. What's more interesting, however, about this case is that the recounting offered by Reverend Easterbrook appears to be a successful exorcism. He stated that people in his modern era would find it hard to believe that an exorcism of this man, George Lukens, was indeed true. Because of the apparent success, he asserted that scriptures also bear the weight of authentic history in ancient as well as modern times. Now, how much of that is true? How much of Easterbrook's testimony can be believed? It's all personal judgment, isn't it? But let's remind ourselves that it's always personal judgment. And judgment really is how how judgment comes out would be based on your experiences, what you've seen, what you've learned, the stuff that you've tried to know, how you were brought up, and your personal view of the world overall. So there's a lot involved That's why we're always looking for that hardcore proof and evidence, isn't it? Just like in a crime, 
We need to see to believe. We need to know. But this reverend went out of his way to try to put it out there knowing that people would not believe what he had to say. Now, as someone who's receiving this share about George Lukens, who was clearly a big deal at the time, this share isn't overly detailed and overly long. But based on what you've heard here today, do you believe this could have happened? Do you believe in exorcisms? And do you believe that someone can come in and perform an exorcism and actually rid you of all demons? Or maybe do you see it more like a cancer that sure, you can think you got all of it, but you never really know if all of it is gone. Share your thoughts. Let me know what you think. And if you have personal experiences with this, please do share. And thank you for listening. And I will talk to you all soon.